Okay, so let's begin. Good morning, uh, everyone. So today we are still going to be reviewing um, some of the stuff we did before and maybe add just a little bit of new, new things. Okay, so uh, today we're going to need maybe another chair or desk uh, just for one part later. Okay, but uh, let's start off with still our posture. Okay, so uh, you can still kind of place, uh, kind of check, kind of review. So if you kind of try to take a breath in, if you're a little slouch, okay, it's much harder to take a full breath in, okay, versus if you sit a little bit taller, okay, it gets a little bit easier to take a full breath in. Okay, so let's kind of just uh, kind of loosen our spine a little bit. So let's kind of just take a breath in as we kind of pull our shoulders back, try to bring our heart up to the ceiling a little bit, arch your back a little bit. Okay, and you can just kind of relax and contract, I guess. Okay, so we're breathing in as we arch your back, okay, breathing out as we kind of rang our spine a little bit. Okay, so let's repeat maybe three to five times. Okay, take it as slowly as you need to, okay, and you don't need to force yourself to slouch either. Okay, just a relaxation. Okay, for this one, try to see if you can feel which part of your back is tightening. Okay, a lot of times we rely on our low back, okay, but we also, so, if I'm doing this, I'm only kind of um, arching this part and you can see my upper back is actually still slouch. Okay, so we want to also extend the upper part of the spine as well. So that's, you can think of it as bring your chest bone or bring your heart up to the ceiling. Okay, and we want to sit kind of in neutral for this. Okay, so you should feel like you're sitting on a on your sit bone, which is uh, feels like something poking out. Okay, and your back should have just a little bit of a curve. Okay, and your shoulders is just a little bit wider as well. Okay, so second review, we can breathe using different uh, kind of muscles. So we have the diaphragm, which goes down, downwards as we as it contracts, so it kind of sucks the air in. Okay, so. We can also use our ribs, okay, which primarily kind of opens up like an umbrella, so it kind of opens up um, mostly sideways, but also the back and a little bit in front as well. Okay, and then we have the chest, so it kind of opens up. You can use all the muscles, the more shallow muscles, the more uh, superficial muscles to almost open the chest up from top. Okay, that also sucks the air. Okay, so let's re just try to breathe using the three different muscles. Okay, so try to do the, see, uh, go to diaphragm first. Okay, so roughly belly button level, maybe out to the side a little bit. Okay, you can lightly press in. Okay, as you breathe in, see if you can feel your belly kind of pressing out. Okay, as you breathe out, it should almost sink back in. Okay, so. Uh, deep breathing almost have a little bit of massaging effects in, into the uh, other organs according to some school of thought, okay, because when it does move down, it does kind of move the other organs around. So let's try. Just three to five breath, okay, and let's go up top a little bit. So base of the chest bone, you can go out a little bit or find just find any of your ribs, okay, so same idea. Lightly press in, see if you can as you breathe in. See if it goes out. As you breathe out, see if you can lower it down, your ribs down as well. Okay, at any point, if you feel dizzy, just stop or just move around a little bit. Okay, and then last, the chest level. Okay, so you can uh, maybe base of the armpit, just come out front a little bit as you breathe in. Your chest may rise a little bit, your shoulders might come up a little bit as well.
Okay, so most of the time we want to be using the diaphragm and also the, the ribs as well. Okay, so today we might go, we're going to go into more detail about the ribs later on. Okay, but uh, remember that it, the body does expand not just forward but all the way around. Okay, so we use one more we'll practice one more time just using the band as a feedback tool. Okay, you can continue using your uh, fingers if you if you want to. Okay, but same level as before, so still belly button level. Okay, okay. Just let me wrap it around. Okay, and see if you can feel the kind of expansion, kind of not just in front, but maybe a little bit around as well. Okay, so primarily it still might be the front for the diaphragm, okay, but let's give it a try. Okay, just kind of pay attention mostly. Okay, so just be more aware of what our body is doing. Okay, same thing with the other level. Okay, so the rest you might feel more out to the side. For some people, you might not feel it as much in the back. So today we are going to try to work on that a little bit, just so that our ribs are moving uh, kind of all the way around. Okay, but before that, let's just go to our chest again. Okay, so just kind of tuck it around into your armpits. Okay, so a little bit of sideways movement, but maybe still more up and down with the chest. Okay, so uh, let's talk about more about the diaphragm and what's uh, going on down here. Okay, so uh, like we mentioned before, so uh, when we use a contract a diaphragm, the diaphragm does move down. Um, so it does push into the other organs a little bit. Okay, so where does that kind of pressure go? So if our belly is kind of relaxed, like we're just sitting here right now, it does usually kind of um, goes out a little bit. Okay, but what if we are lifting something, let's say a little heavier, or we are doing something more strenuous? Okay, so there are muscles kind of in front, uh, kind of this way and this way, so it kind of, because it kind of protects our back a little bit. Uh, it's not actually, it does protect our back, so it's kind of, everything contracts, so it makes your spine more stable. Okay, so. Let's give that a try to see what that uh, feels like. Okay, so you, uh, maybe a chair with a, with a back would be a little bit safer. Okay, so still good posture first. Okay, so barely, if you feel belly right now, it's a little bit, should be a little bit soft right now. Okay, so now let's try to lean back a little bit. Okay, but without slouching. Okay, so you're gonna still sit tall, you're gonna lean back, still trying to imagine bring your chest up. Okay, if you go far enough, you should feel like your abdominal muscles actually become a little bit stiffer. Okay, so everything becomes tight here. Okay, so if you try to take a take, uh, deep breath in here, okay, you'll find that maybe it does move a little bit, okay, but it's not gonna be nearly as much as if we are kind of sitting uh, kind of more relaxed. Okay, so, um, what that means is that there are a couple of things that can kind of happen. So um, as you go down, as your diaphragm goes down, okay, your abdominal muscles are contracted, okay, so the pressure can either go deeper down, so kind of more into the, the pelvis area, okay. So that could have some problems for uh, some people. Uh, if you have some things like incontinence or you have pelvic floor issues, sometimes that could uh, cause incontinence. So that's why it's actually quite important for your ribs to also move 
sideways. Okay, so even though we a lot of times when we talk about breathing, we talk about using the diaphragm, it's actually important to also move our ribs as well. Okay, so not just to the side, but also a little bit backwards. Okay, so what we're gonna try today is just actually trying to breathe more into the ribs and maybe a little bit more even into the back. Okay, so for this practice, we are going to uh, have something in front as well again. So either a desk or another chair or anything that you can, or even just your, even your elbows is fine actually. Okay, so uh, yeah, so either lean forward like this. Okay, so we're just trying to create less room in front for your diaphragm to um, expand. Okay, so uh, it might be more comfortable if you have something to lean into, but the idea is push your back back a little bit. You can even round your back a little bit. It's almost like a child's pose in, in yoga. Um, actually, this could be the easiest way. This would just into your elbows. Uh, if it makes it hard to breathe at any point, feel free to stop. Okay, so we're just gonna stay here. Let's just take a couple of breaths and see, kind of feel where the pressure goes. Okay, so as you take a breath in. Okay, uh, I forgot to mention, you can also, if you don't feel comfortable leaning forward so much, you can also just, um, let's say have a, like a stool. Um, so I have kind of like two, I don't know if you can, uh, it's a little bit out of frame, but you can put your feet up on something instead and do it this way. So you can uh, maybe just take a second to see which one works for you. Okay, so I'm doing a combination of everything. Okay, but let's try to take a breath in here. Okay, so if your knee is high enough, you should feel like you're better expand, but there's not much room going on. Okay, so mostly just pay attention. Let's try to pay attention to see where the pressure is going. So some people might feel like it's actually pushing further down into the pelvis. Um, so that, yeah, so that can be a problem for some people. Uh, we actually, we wanted to also mostly in the back area actually. Um, so most of the time when people have very stiff backs, the, it doesn't really expand uh, towards the back so well. So we're gonna try to do an exercise to see if you can move that part a little bit. Okay, so it does take a little bit of control, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna breathe out fully, almost, almost fully, or as much as you feel comfortable. Okay, and then you're gonna try to just um, almost keep everything still. So it's still, uh, it's gonna be restricted by your legs already. But what you're gonna to try to do is try to send the air almost, try to breathe into your back. Okay, so almost, in, you should try to see if you can feel your back kind of moving a little bit and back. Okay, so don't let the air go out front so much, and let it go downward so much. Okay, see if you can move the rib, ribs with the, just by breathing in. Okay, so. Uh, it may take a little bit of playing around to see how that feels, okay, but you're gonna breathe out. And try to see if you can, without moving other parts. Let's see if you can feel, try to send the air into your, the back. So it's a very kind of more subtle movements. Yep. Yeah. But uh like you that like you cannot, right? Or like it makes you feel out of breath, is that Oh, that's your habits. Uh, yeah, it could, I mean, for a lot of people with um, like COPD, um, the ribs are already overly um, flared out. So uh, that's why people have a little bit of a barrel chest. Uh, so I think for people with COPD, you might have to work on even contracting it back then. Uh, so it could be different from uh, person to person. You can still be more, be more aware of it. Yeah. 
that's fine. So just some for people it could be different. It's for some a lot some people are just their ribs and the back don't move so well. So just even pay attention to which part is moving and which one is not. You can just think of it at, at that way. No problem. Okay, so uh, let's just do maybe a couple more breath. Okay, so uh, still try to breathe, uh, breathe out. Okay, and as you breathe in, see if you can just feel your ribs in the back or your back, just your back expanding as you take a deep breath in and feel the back of me just coming back in as you breathe out. Slowly come back out. Okay, and maybe just spend a little bit more time uh, extending your back because usually we don't want to just be in a slouch position all the time. So if we do spend a the time slouching, then let's spend a little bit more time in the opposite direction. So you can even stretch out the front a little bit okay, by maybe putting your hand behind your low back and just spend a couple more breaths. So um, that's why it's, it's important to not just move your diaphragm. Uh, so uh, a lot of times people, we teach just the belly breathing, but it doesn't work so well when we are uh, lifting something heavy, just because it does, everything does contract around a lot more. It is not, you can't really expand it just out front. Uh, for people with, let's say a hernia or something like, um, like a, the muscle up here is also maybe separated a little bit. It might not be such a good idea to always just do the diaphragm breathing as well. We also just want to expand more, more or less all the way around and your ribs do want to move um, sideways and also a little backwards. So the ribs is like a brother, it should open kind of all the way around okay, and kind of closes in and everything comes back in as well. Okay, so the, that's why sometimes in yoga and things like that, you have the the child's pose, which is just, uh, looks, uh, if I'm lying down on the floor, it will look something closer to this. Uh, and they can practice breathing in that stance. Okay, so uh, just kind of keep that in mind, see if you can pay more attention, or sometimes if you find it doesn't really move well in the back, maybe you can spend a little bit more time in that position, see if you can move that a little bit. Okay, so let's go into the um, other parts. Okay, let's try to do the same thing, but in standing. Okay, so grab as much support as you need to. Check your surroundings for safety first. Okay, so nothing you can trip on, slip on. Okay, use as much support as you, as you need. Okay, so let's still get into the proper posture first. Okay, so still lengthen your entire body. So you can think of literally try to pull your head up to the ceiling. Okay, so your shoulders, your spine is nice and long. Okay, shoulders maybe just a little bit wider. Okay, same with the, the pelvis. Okay, so sometimes people might hang out kind of like this. So overarching the back. Some people might do the opposite. So if you lengthen the spine, that should be okay already, but try to lift the front of the pants up a little bit. Okay, so just a little bit of a curve here. Okay, but um, you're, probably, you're not overarching the low back so much. Okay, so usually we're a little bit tight here. Okay, so let's try to take a breath in. Okay, so still try to Breathe into the diaphragm, definitely. Try to move the ribs, okay? Also try to move the upper chest a little bit just for practice, okay? So just take a really big breath in and pay attention to what is moving and what is not, okay? So let's try a couple breaths.
Okay, so for the ribs, so the second level, see if you can feel it go into your back a little bit more. Just relax in between. Uh, sit down anytime you need to. Okay, so let's do a little bit of stretching, uh, just the hips as well, and also the, maybe the ribs side of the trunk. Okay, so we're gonna have, uh, you might wanna hold a little bit more here. Okay, so we're gonna have one foot in front, one foot in the back. Okay, if you feel comfortable, see if you can get the back leg also behind the other foot, okay? But if your balance is not as steady, uh, or you don't feel comfortable, just feel free to have the foot just a little bit more staggered. Okay, so there's a muscle that goes from the front of the hips, uh, that come more like the, almost the inside of the hips to, um, to, the, to the, uh, the base of the, to the one of the spine. Okay, the low back really. Okay, so let's just try to take a, uh, bring your arms out front, okay? Open the chest a little bit as well. So let's just try to take a breath here in, in here. Okay, you might feel a little more of a stretch in this area. Okay, if that's this is okay for you, see if you can almost side bend a little bit more. Okay, so you're almost pressing the hips out a little bit. more if you're comfortable if at any point you feel like that's your limit just stay there okay and coming back passing as long as you need to this will probably just feel a little more of a stretch in the area, maybe a little bit up front, depending on how uh, stacked your legs are. Okay, when you're ready, let's try the same thing on our side. Okay, so also still try to open up the chest area as well. Okay, so uh, hands cut out to the side. Okay, we can open the palm up as well. Okay, once again, if you feel comfortable, see if you can get the back leg more behind the front. Okay, and let's just try Just a deep breath in. Okay, see if you can bring the, once again, the front of your pants up a little bit. Okay, and a little bit side bend. Okay, still try to breathe into the three levels. Okay, once again, just sit down in between if you need to. Okay, so uh, next part, we are just gonna go into more motion. Okay, so sometimes it's good that we can do it kind of standing still or sitting down, but let's try to do it in motion. So we are just gonna go into the uh, kind of the simplified Tai Chi. Okay, so we might add maybe one more, a uh, little bit more of the hands today, okay, but let's still start off the basics. Okay, just the very basic uh, lifting and then putting it back there. Okay, so uh, you can think of the squares in front. So uh, you have two lines roughly kind of armpit width apart. Okay, you're still trying to pull the entire body 
to be taller. Okay, front of the pants will be still a little bit tilted up slightly. Okay, just because we tend to do the opposite a little bit more as we try to stand taller. Okay, so let's just try just working with the arms first. Okay, so we're just going to take a breath in. Okay, I'll just try to continually uh, do the deep breathing. Okay, roughly shoulder level, then you try to bring your arms in. Okay, I generally like to breathe out as I almost try to press down on something, so lightly open at the palm. Okay, and let's try one more time. Okay, so still pay attention to what the which part of the body you're using to breathe. Okay, so at this time, let's try to slightly soften the knees a little bit. Okay, so bend the knees slightly. Okay, uh, this is a little different than our usual squatting, so uh, we're not doing the usual squats where we uh, lean forward so much. Okay, see if you can maintain a taller posture, a more vertical posture this time. Okay, and lightly just bend the knees. Okay, so your knees are going to travel a little more forward. You are going to feel a little more pressure maybe on your knees, on your thighs. Okay, so don't drop down too low. So we're not trying to drop to a very low squat. Okay, so when we do that, we do want to stick our bum. Okay, for this one, we are just softening the knees a little bit. Okay, so still, uh, let's start from the top again. So, staying taller, okay. Wash the pelvis. Okay, so this time as you press down, you're gonna soften your knees a little bit, but maintain a taller posture, a more vertical posture with the upper body. Okay, and let's, let's just stand up, see if you can just straighten out the knees a little bit as well. One more time. Okay, so just a little bit harder to watch all of this while we're paying attention to our limbs as well. Okay, so once again, if you have lung issue, you need to sit down any point, feel free to kind of rest in between. Okay, so that's kind of number one. Okay, number two is the one where we take a step forward. Okay, so just as a review, starting position is still, so while I'm explaining, feel free to sit down and rest at any point. Okay, so second movement, okay, very similar, uh, not very similar, but a little different, but same idea. Okay, still same starting posture. Okay, so first step is just to turn one foot, okay, roughly 45 degrees out. Okay, you're gonna shift your weight onto that leg, okay, and you're turning your pelvis towards it as well. Okay, so whichever leg has the weight on, you're gonna turn your pelvis, so kind of your belly button, your hips are pulling in the same direction as the toe. Okay, and then you're gonna take kind of a big step forward or as big of a step as you feel comfortable forward, okay, still along the same kind of line as, is, as the starting position. Okay, and you're gonna shift your weight onto the front leg. Okay, and once again, you're turning your hips so that it's facing the same direction as your knee and your toes. Okay, still watch the pelvis. Okay, for a lot of people, you might feel a little bit of stretch in the front of the leg. Okay, to go back is the same idea. You still turn your pelvis, shift your weight onto the back leg. Okay, so pelvis once again face the same direction as your knee and toes. Okay, come back to the starting position with the foot. Okay, shift your weight back okay, and turn your foot back in. Okay, so um, just going to explain the hands as well. Actually, let's just practice that first. Okay, so maybe we can just do the feet. Okay, and then we add the hands afterwards. Okay, so let's give it uh, both sides, maybe um, let's try shifting back and forth a few times. Okay, so still standing position, toes pointing forward, roughly armpit width apart. Okay, pelvis leveled. Okay, so still turn out one foot 45 degrees. Okay, still pay attention to our breathing. Okay, shift your weight onto that leg. Okay, take a big step forward along the same 
line. Okay, shift your weight forward. Okay, pelvis is still lifted. Okay, pelvis turn towards your weight. Okay, in the front, see if you can almost try and lift, tap the back toe a little bit. Okay, so that's how you know your weight is on the front leg. Okay, and shift back. Okay, same idea, see if you can at least tap the toes. Okay, and step back and back to the side of the position. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily, when you say, when I say tap, it doesn't necessarily have to mean you have to lift it up, but at least you feel like you can at least lift the toes relatively easily or lift the heels relatively easily. Okay, so we just want to make sure we are actually shifting our weight. Okay, same thing on the other side. Okay, so turn, okay, weight shift. Okay, once you can turn the pelvis, big step forward, shift, weight shift, also still touch the pelvis. Okay, see if you can tap something. Okay, shift back. Okay, see if you can tap, move the feet, front foot a little bit. Okay, and bring it back. And bring it back. Okay, so uh, you can to take a break in between. We can just explain their hands part. Okay, so. Uh, we can just add the hands kind of similar to last time. Uh, if we're okay with this one, we add something else. Okay, so you can start off even just at the same thing as before. Okay, and you, you're gonna just turn one foot. Okay, as you shift your weight onto that leg, you're gonna bring the same side arm up. Okay, so whatever leg has the weight on, the top arm is gonna be on top. Okay, so you're holding a ball in this position. Elbows are kind of relaxed. Okay, so we're not trying to do like a chicken wing, so just the hands, the wrist up. Okay, you're still doing the same footwork of the hands, oh, sorry, with the legs. Okay, as you shift your weight forward, you're gonna bring the same side arm up as well. So it's kind of like the same idea of pressing down. Okay, the top hand roughly maybe um, like about a fist length. Okay, so still shifting forward. Okay, as you go back, you're just gonna do the opposite, so. Holding your ball again, whatever leg has a weight on, you're gonna lift the arms up. Okay, and just backing down to the middle. Okay, so let's give that a try. Okay, so once again, we're gonna review the breathing. So still try to breathe more in the diaphragm, more into the ribs. Okay, try to see if you can go a little more in the back for today. Okay, so rest longer if you need to. Okay, but if you want to, let's give it just want to try. Okay, so same thing, but just kind of combine it into almost the two movements a little bit. Okay, so let's start off. Good posture again. Let's practice one breath. So. Okay, you can start to bring the arms in front. Your shoulders are still relaxed, even the arms are moving up. Okay, bring the arms. Back in, keep pressing down slightly. You can start your knees a little bit. You can just shift your weight a little bit and turn one foot. Okay, as you shift your weight on to that leg, you can lift the same side arm. The other hand is gonna scoop up, so like you're holding a ball, shoulders to relax. Okay, and hips are turned towards the uh, weight bearing leg. Okay, take a big step forward. Okay, start to shift your weight over to the front leg and bring the same side up. So the same side arm up. Okay, turning your pelvis again, lifting the front a little bit again. Okay, still try to take a deep breath in here. Okay, let's shift back. Okay, so back arm comes up. 
We bring the other foot back in and just reset. Okay, once again, pause as long, rest in between, or just sit down at any point. Okay, even, even just practice with just the hands, uh, if you're sitting down even. Okay, so uh, we're just gonna practice other side for now. Okay, so if you feel to take a break, okay, but let's start from the top again. Okay, so still top posture, level pelvis, Okay, take a deep breath in, see if you can do one, two, three. Okay, and start to do the two, two movements together. So arms up the top, just to show a level. Okay, elbows relax, shoulders relax. Okay, you can press something down, soften the knees a little bit. Okay, you can shift the weight over to the other leg. Oh, so, sorry, turn the foot out. Okay, shift the weight onto that leg as you bring the same side arm up. So you're holding the ball, turning your pelvis to that direction as well. Okay, take a big step forward. Okay, turn your entire body, turn your hips. Okay, shoulders still relax. Deep breath in and out at the end. Okay, you're gonna shift back. Okay, take the foot back. Okay, so uh, let's pause here for a second. Okay, so still, uh, so maybe since we have 10 minutes left, I'm um, just gonna stop here for the other part. Okay, so next time we might add a little bit, so slight variation in the hands, okay, but very, it's gonna be very similar footwork. Okay, so um, we for the last 10 minutes, uh, we're probably gonna just try the harmonica a little bit. So if you do wanna join us, or if you do have a harmonica, uh, you can feel free to just uh, continue here. Okay, if not, uh, you can maybe we'll see everyone, uh, see you next week. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna actually grab a tissue first, just so I can shake out my harmonica afterwards. Uh, remember to also um, kind of maybe rinse your mouth at the very least, okay, before you play, uh, just so there's no food stuff or sugary stuff going into your harmonica. Okay, so give even a second. Okay, let me know if the sound is too loud or too soft uh, because it, uh, my computer does sometimes filter out uh, the noise, which it thinks I want to catch the noise. <laughs> okay, so uh, just as a review, so once again, they, uh, depending on which you, so there are multiple holes. Uh, some harmonicas are kind of labeled uh, with numbers. So the, the four is the, is the middle C. Okay, so uh, we just kind of start there. Okay, so uh, we're just gonna practice blowing out longer and breathing in longer first. So don't worry about the mouth shape so much. Okay, we're gonna start off with just practicing. Let's try two seconds out. So two beat out. Okay, pause. Okay, another two seconds out. Okay, pause. Okay, and then two seconds out again. Okay, so for three times. Okay, so to hold it once again, you just gripping the kind of the back end of the harmonica with the left hand. Okay, the other hand is just going to be covering here. It will still work if you hold it like this. Okay, but just it just makes a little bit slightly better sound if you're holding it kind of this way. The, so some people do fancy stuff the hands here. Okay, but it will work if you even just do this. Okay, so let's get a try. So three times pouring out, okay, holding for kind of two seconds, uh, at least two seconds each time. Okay, so let's give it a try. Okay, just roughly around the four uh, hole. 
Okay, so there you go. Yeah, good. Okay, so okay, and second time. Okay, so see if you can get a kind of longer breath out and a smoother breath out. Okay, and last time. Okay, so that's the basic breathing out. Okay, let's try the opposite. Let's try breathing in this time. So we'll make a sound, the harmonica makes a sound even if you, as you breathe in. Okay, so this one you're gonna suck air in. So this is the one that Okay, so. Okay, so we're just breathing in. It's, it's, uh. No, you're breathing into it. You're sucking air into into your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's gonna try. Okay, so you should feel that body expanding. I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna just do more like continuously. Okay, so we're gonna, let's, do, um, let's do it four times. So we're gonna breathe out, okay, and then breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Okay, so each time we're going one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay? Yeah, so don't worry about the mouth shape so much. Uh, don't just practice the breathing out and then the breathing in. Okay, so let's give it a try. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to make it a little bit long. So like when we do uh, usual even breathing practice without a harmonica, you're still trying to do a longer breath out. Okay, and longer breath in. Okay, and you're still trying to do exactly the same as what we did before. Okay, just that there's a little bit of resistance going on right now. Okay, so now to make it, so the sound is probably a little bit kind of muddled right now. Okay, so let's try, we're gonna do almost like a person breathing as, as what we are doing the, uh, if you see OPD. Hello? Sure, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a little bit of practice. Yeah, sometimes it could be the, could be the angle, sometimes it, it might be a little more difficult to so try to turn the angle a little bit and also it takes a little bit of practice to get enough airflow. Sure, yeah. Okay. I, I think you're blowing pretty low on, on this side. Try somewhere closer to the middle. On the, on the four? Okay. Yeah, so it takes, it takes a little bit of practice, yeah. Okay, make it sound. <laughs> it takes a little bit of practice. So um, you can try breathing. Yeah, try maybe, you can try uh, blowing out, uh, breathing in, sucking in a little bit harder sometimes. So it kind of feels like that on the top side. For me, it's sometimes hard to make a sound even up top uh, because I'm, I'm a complete newbie as well. Uh, so you can try, you might breathe in or breathe out just a little bit slightly harder. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so uh, so right now we're playing almost like a chord, so because you are blowing through multiple holes at the same time, that's why there's a multiple sounds. Okay, so this time we're gonna practice almost like, it's almost like the person breathing when we, uh, if, if you know, if you have a lung condition, you know what we talk, I'm talking about. So that's the one where you're making a U shape, saying the word U, almost like uh, blowing through a straw or, okay, so you're not actually saying the word, you're just, Flowing through like a smaller opening in the in the uh, in the lips. Okay, so your goal is just try to see if you can um, 
blow into a single hole so that you are listening just for one sound. So it sounds instead of like a whole bunch of sounds, it just sounds something more like. So it's a, sing it's a single sound. So feel free to even just turn off the. Um, the uh, so just listen to your own harmonica, see if you can blow out to a single single note. Okay, so same idea, still so try to breathe out for two. Okay, and pause, breathe out for two. Okay, so this, actually this time, let's try to do four, five, six. Okay, so you're blowing out for uh, the, for the four hole. Okay, try to blow out for the five hole and blow out for the six hole. So you're doing do, fa, so, do, we, so, do, we, mi, do, mi, so. <laughs> Okay, so it's just, so you're still blowing out. Yeah, so you're still doing multiple holes at the same time. So this is a little bit of practice, but it's just sound more like. So it's a single, it's a single note. Okay, so it takes a little bit of practice, but see if you can. Yeah, better, yeah. Okay, move your harmonica a little bit. Okay, yeah, so now as you can hear multiple notes. Okay. okay, not bad, yeah. Okay, and then you can go back down. Okay, yeah, you're still going up, that's fine. Okay, so let's try to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it does work the same way. So you can do, also try the same thing, you can do uh, so after you try blowing out, so do so be. Then you can try breathing in. Okay, so you can give that a try. Okay, so, okay, yeah, no worry, yeah. Okay, so try to. Better, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's really good. You're all the way up. No worries. It, it, that, this, this is the harder one. I think the hardest part to start with is trying to blow through a single hole. Um, so the actually it's a little bit tiring in for the mouth if you do it properly. So. You can do kind of like this, but technically you're supposed to also kind of do this as well. So you're sucking in your cheeks a little bit, uh, but don't worry too much about it. Mostly just, okay. Yeah, so let's try it another, so let's try a uh, slightly different way. Okay, so let's today let's at least get the idea of the scale across. So you can do breathe out, breathe in, shift to the next hole, breathe out, breathe in. So we go for, so you're being Okay, so last couple of notes is a little different, but let's try blow out, blow in, go to the five, blow out, blow in, go to the six, blow out, blow, uh, uh, breathe in. Yeah, so you can give that a try instead. So this is a scale. So this is something you can practice uh, this week. Okay, a little bit slower, so okay, don't rush. Okay, yeah, not bad. Okay, not bad. So you're still making multiple notes, but that takes a little bit of practice. Uh, try to make it longer. So you think of it even still as a breathing practice. So make the notes a little bit longer, blowing, going out, okay, longer breathing in. Okay, so this is still, that's, that's why it's, it is a breathing practice in a sense, okay, because you're trying to still control your breath out, control breath in. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can def so this week, let's give that as, a, as homework. So let's try to see if you can A, uh, just uh, make a sound going out, going in, okay? But second part is just being able to make a single note. So 
kind of press your lip, blowing through the straw. Okay, so I, it's, I should. So it's kind of something like this. Okay, and so same, I'll blow, I'll blow it. Okay, yes. Yeah, so it can be fun, a little fun in, the, in a way. Uh, and try to, and then try to practice the scale. So it's blow out, blow in, try to move. So remember when you move, uh, don't move your head so much, kind of move your, move your hands. So uh, uh, do, there's a little bit up, up top, so it's not gonna be a complete scale, but at least go to the bottom, couple bottom notes, so be. Probably go back down. Sorry. Okay, so try to make the notes a little bit longer. Okay, so um, I need practice as well, so, so don't, don't worry. Maybe just be careful if you have neighbors. Or, um, but just remember afterwards, uh, usually I just wrap my harmonica around okay, and just kind of try to shake out the, pulse, the moisture back out. It is, it, it is a proud practice. So you're still, if you're doing it with a harmonica with a little bit, you just. Okay, so it's a longer breath out. Okay, and also. Uh, is a full breath in as well. Okay, so uh, it is a definitely a form of practice. No problem. Okay, let me just write down. Um, yeah, so definitely you can still rinse it of soapy water a little bit or soak it a little bit. Okay, and rinse it back out. Okay, but do that air dry. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, make sure it's not exposed to all the dust and things like that. Okay, so uh, thank you for coming everyone. I think uh, let's stop here uh, for today. Um, if you have any suggestions for things like that, let me know. This is still a new class, so I'm trying to still figure things out a little bit as well. Okay, so let me know which part is good, which part maybe you don't like as much. Okay, and I'll try to make changes then. No problem. Take care. You too. Everyone as well.